So, let us start this lecture with a thought process given by Antony Lavoisier, which is a great chemistry. I consider nature a vast chemical laboratory in which all kinds of composition and decompositions are formed. Vegetation is the basic instrument the creator uses to set all of nature's in motion. Actually, similar statement, particular last one is being talked about in our literature. You people may not be aware about our scripture. Last statement is similar, what Lavoisier has talked about, okay. okay. And also, they look at it. So, if you look at in uh, last few lecture, we discuss about how to handle the chemical equilibrium. In other words, how to estimate the chemical equilibrium along with the adiabatic temperature, right. And uh, if you consider that there also we looked at the chemical reactions, right. Today, we will be learning the basically chemistry of the combustion, chemical reactions, how to handle those things we will be looking at. Uh, if you look at that in equilibrium, what we did? We basically looked at extent of the chemical reaction what is taking place, right? Yes or no? We are not bothered about the, the what will be the rate of reactions, right? We looked at only the extent of which the it will be reaction will be proceeding. For that also we consider the chemical reactions and in combustion therefore, we will have to look at extent of rate of chemical reactions. Because why you will do that? We need to find out what is the heat release rate, right. So, for that we will have to consider the chemical reaction. Let us consider few reactions. For example, two moles of hydrogen reacting with one mole of oxygen going to the product, two moles of water, right. And here what we are considering? We are considering basically all these are gas, right? We are considering. Of course, the water can be gas, it can be also liquid. We have already discussed that, okay. And this is the reaction whether it is possible in nature or not, that is a questionable, right? Is it really possible this reaction to occur? Right? That is the question we need to ask why not? a question might be coming in your mind. And let us look at uh, H is reacting with oxygen going to the HO2, right. And there might be another reaction which will be considering the carbon reacting with carbon dioxide going to the 2 CO, it is a very nice thing you know what do you do? We are having so much of carbon dioxide in the <laughs> air like we have increasing the carbon dioxide na? in every year tons of carbon dioxide why every year every day tons of carbon dioxide we emit and then why do not you take it out and then react with that you will get a CO, CO is carbon monoxide which is a fuel. Okay. We can burn the CO na, right and get some heat, but that is not that easy. Okay. So, but however, we uh, do take place. So, you keep in mind the C is the solid and G is the gas, uh, sorry carbon dioxide is gas, the carbon is solid form that means this is the one kind of reaction. So, therefore, we need to find out what are the kinds of reaction is taking place in a chemical reaction, right. And in, in, during combustion, what are the kinds of chemical reaction taking place? We need to also understand also aware what is happening. Uh, we have learned that uh, what are the chemical compositions and adiabatic temperature at equilibrium, we have already dealt with how to handle that, right. We need to also look at how fast does a chemical reaction take place and what will be the overall rate at which the reaction will be taking place. There might be several reaction which is taking place simultaneously, right. And what are the mechanism by which chemical reaction takes place, right. For example, two moles of hydrogen reacting with one moles of oxygen going to the two moles of water, is it really occurring or it is uh, not possible it will be going through series of 
chemical reactions and the end you know some product water will be coming and some other pulp combustion is there. We have already seen in chemical uh, compositions whenever we are determining at the uh, equilibrium, but there we consider arbitrary chemical reactions, we did not really look at it, what is happening, whether it is happening or not, right. We only looked at okay, S2 is uh, you know dissociated <coughs> to H, O2 is dissociated to O, right. We are not bothered about whether that is possible or not, but in mechanism you need to bother about what are the steps will be, which will be important at when pressure is a uh, 5 atmosphere pressure, which will be important at some other thing, at a particular temperature what will be you know like which reaction will be important, those things we need to bother about and also mechanism, right. So, then question arises we need to also learn about chemical reaction and its reaction rate because the rate is very important. As I told the heat release rate is very uh, important to know how much heat being released, how much not being heat released and what is the rate. If it is rate of uh, reaction is very high then it may lead to explosion, right. It may be uncontrolled because what we need in combustion is a control release of heat. If it is uncontrolled, it will be explosion, okay. So, explosion has to be avoided and also the uh, its ramification. Beside this very important point is that chemical kinetics or the chemical reaction is very important to look at the propagation velocity or propagation of flame front. You might be knowing in a fire, na, any of you are from the village rural areas, you know this has the house they are using. The fire, one place fire is occurring, it will spread like a wildfire, you know like it will become very wild. Like the way today Facebook is creating problems of uh, you know spreading the rumors. Are you getting? <laughs> so, similarly fire we are just moving you know. So, uh, and then we need to know and also whether it will be ignited or not, whether it will be extinction will occur or not. Suppose I want to extinguish a fire and that will be dictated by the chemical reaction and then flame stability, heat release rates and several other things are governed by the chemical reactions and re heat release rates, right. So, therefore, those things we need to uh, predict and also understand for that we need to learn the chemistry of part, right, chemical reactions we need to learn, otherwise we cannot handle it. It will be like your IC engine research like black box you know like input and output, they do not know what is happening inside. You ever aware uh, about inter piston engines right, they do some research, but they are not bothered what is happening, they will just measure some grass things right. <coughs> and they do not know in some cases we do particularly in engineering, but when you want to look at the understanding or the some phenomena then you need to get into the chemistry. So, beside this another very important point is the today we are facing the problem of environmental pollution and we need to control. For that we need to understand the mechanism, how to intervene so that undesirable uh, pollutants should not be formed. So, that is also another challenge which you need to look at. Therefore, we need to look at chemical you know reactions and rate. And when you talk about that, we basically look at a science that is a physical chemistry part, right, which is very important and that specialized branch of physical chemistry dealing with the study of chemical reactions and their governing factors you know which is known as chemical kinetics. So, what we will be dealing with uh, in next few lectures will be uh, basically about the chemical kinetics, right. So, for that if you look at the chemical reactions can be broadly divided into two categories based on the physical state of the species that is homogeneous reaction and heterogeneous reaction. Homogeneous reaction means where the state will be same for all the reactant and species in a reaction. For example, two uh, moles of carbon monoxide is reacting with 1 mole of oxygen going to 2 moles of carbon dioxide. If you recall this reaction we had seen in the earlier in the just opposite way, right. So, um, all these 
participating spaces are in gas phase therefore, we call it homogeneous reaction and heterogeneous reaction is the one like where one of them will be solid or others will be gas or, or they will be at a different state different physical state. For example, one mole of carbon which is at the solid state reacting with the carbon dioxide going to the two moles of carbon monoxide gas right. This is known as heterogeneous reaction and uh, heterogeneous reaction do occur, but particularly when you are handling the solid fuel and uh, some extent to liquid fuel right. Um, but most of the reactions whatever will be taking place in gas phase right. And uh, as I told the chemical reactions can be broadly again divided in two categories one is explosive reaction and other is non explosive reaction based on the reaction rate. If it is very fast then we call it as a explosive or explosion will occur therefore, we call it as explosive like you if you look at most of the explosives used in the warfare and also blasting of mountains right and other places wherever blasting is required you know you do the terrorists they use explosives ok. So, uh, those are basically fast reactions which is occurring very very fast and non explosive do not consider it slow I have written slow no it is a moderate ok right. So, uh, as compared to this uh, explosive this will be slow, but <coughs> it will be definitely not that slow ok. It will be good enough to have this thing non explosive reaction and sometimes uh, you know we will be talking about little later on like uh, deflagrations and detonation basically detonation will be explosive in nature deflagration will be combustion general combustion what we will be dealing with. So, uh, let us look at now let us say one mole of methane is reacting with two moles of oxygen going to the one mole of carbon dioxide and two moles of water. Let us consider another reaction oxygen reacting with H going to OH plus O. Now, these reactions if you look at these reactions the first reactions right methane and oxygen what do we call? We call it as a global reaction and O 2 when reacting with H going to the OH plus O this we call it as elementary reaction right. Why you call global reactions? Why you call elementary reaction? We will see. Let us first consider the uh, global reaction and ask a question whether it is really possible to have this right. For that let us consider this one like uh, this reaction and methane is having how many bonds? This is total 4 bonds <coughs> and oxygen will be basically double bond right and carbon dioxide also will be having double bond yes or no. That means, if you look at on the reactant side during this reaction what is happening? That means, these 4 bonds in the methane are broken right. So, also in the oxygen these 4 bonds are broken that means, on the reactant sites how many bonds are broken 8 yes or no. And in the carbon uh, in the product side carbon dioxide these are total 4 bonds this is also 1 2 1 2 this is total is 4 bonds that means, 8 bonds are broken. If you look at this side is 8 bonds are broken right reactant side and these are 8 bonds are formed yes or no right. That means, there will be 8 bond total 16 events will be taking place is it really possible. You imagine you know this room is mixed with methane and oxygen right to start with you raise some temperature. So, that it will be already mixed and some reaction is taking place right that means, this 8 bonds are to be broken is it possible that means, you know molecule will be moving 
they are moving they should even simultaneously how it will break you can think of few collisions okay they will be colliding then it will be having enough energy to that and also it will be collision will be taking place at proper orientation yes sir suppose they are coming and going back like you collide you know you meet some people and then forget do you get any exchange of anything no na right similarly molecule will come and closer kiss each other and go away means touch each other right <laughs> so therefore right nothing will happen like that today we are having friendship hi bye and fly right so there is no friendship as such so no interaction so similarly it is not really possible to have eight bonds are to be broken and eight bonds are to be formed simultaneously is it possible that is not really possible it's impossible right so therefore it is not really possible to have this reaction taking place in this way that means this is only a representative of what is happening that we call it as a global reaction are you getting but however if you take some elementary reaction for example this like what will happening here if you look at o o will be o and o right o2 that means this can be broken and two bonds are broken if you look at o is coming to the oh this another bond that means and one bond is formed here oh right one bond is formed which is possible but eight bonds are formed eight bonds are broken is impossible okay are you getting so therefore this is known as elementary reactions when the reaction occurs successfully at a molecular level involving breaking and forming of one or two bonds because you know this is a, a, a kind of two mo molecules are involved there might be tri molecule that may be two three bonds are broken right maybe one or two bonds either breaking or forming the reaction is termed as elementary are you getting my point that means elementary reactions are likely to be formed but whereas the global reaction will never form this is all a, what we use for our own convenience are you getting is that clear to you you please imagine that you know molecules are moving and then they are interacting they are colliding you know then you can think okay yeah, this looks to be right okay fine so now let us consider n2o5 is going to n2o4 and half o2 of course this may not be possible but i am just writing and o2 plus s2 going to h plus h plus o2 basically is 2h right <coughs> plus o2 and i can say that there is a co carbon monoxide reacting with o with a m m is any species which is not participating m can be nitrogen okay and going to co2 and nitrogen remaining same m is m this is third body is known as basically third body it can be any inert which is not participating in that reaction okay that is known as third body now in this reaction i want to talk about molecularity that means what is the molecularity then you you must have studied this thing in your plus 2 okay you might have forgotten by this time but you must be knowing molecularity is basically how many reactants are participating in the chemical reactions right that means molecular of reaction is defined as the total number of reactant uh, total number of reactant molecules taking part in chemical reaction if you look at this equation what it would be molecularity it will be one you can say unimolecular reaction yes or no and the second one is two molecules are there this is one right and this is another two so this is a bimolecular reactions right if you look at this is the three molecules are there this is one this is one this is one so three so this is known as tri molecularity you can say molecularity is three is that clear right <coughs> now let us look at basic reaction kinetics and when you talk about that we will have to look that reaction rate 
what do you mean by this reaction rate? We know that rate of decrease of reactant concentration or rate of increase of product concentration right or vice versa right this is basically and which is expressed in terms of moles per meter cube second right this is the unit what you can use and this you can in other words it is the quantitative measure of number of moles per product reactant whether it, it may be produced it may be consumed per unit time per unit volume that is the meaning basically right and reaction rate i can write down change in moles of species divided by time increment per unit volume right per unit volume and this mole per meter cube second let us consider an arbitrary reaction right a moles of species a going to the b moles space will be going to the product c moles of c and d moles of d right so if i want to write down this reaction rate right i can say that 1 over a divided by dc a by dt is equal to minus 1 over b dc by by dt right how we are writing this basically by the law of mass action we have already studied and this is minus sign indicates what this is basically destruction of that space is therefore it is negative right in other words it is getting consumed the ca the concentration you know decrease will be negative because initially it will be some amount then it get consumed this thing and this is basically uh, you know for the product c dc by dt 1 over c is equal to 1 over d dc d by dt and this is positive because it is being produced right and if i consider h plus o right o h what i will do i can write down the reaction rate of h is equal to dc h by dt which is proportional to what C H and C O, right. So, that means, this reaction rate is basically function of concentration, right. Now, we know the reaction rate also will be dependent on temperature, it will be dependent also on the pressure, right but how it is so because here this is showing only the concentration of the participating species okay we will see that for that of course uh, we will have to look at the law of mass action which says the rate of reactions of a chemical species is proportional to the product of concentration of participating chemical species where each concentration is raised to the power equal to the corresponding stoichiometric coefficient in a chemical reaction right that we have already seen and for that i can write down the reaction rate of i species is proportional product of c m i v i where i is equal to 1 to n number of species whatever you consider right and that is equal to r i is equal to k into product of all these spaces and these are stoichiometric coefficients these are stoichiometric coefficients right corresponding to the right and what is this k k is basically specific reaction rate or the rate coefficient okay and k depends on temperature of course activation energy not on the concentration right uh, uh, and also their stoichiometric coefficient because uh, right and keep in mind that this is law of mass action holds good for elementary reaction only now we need to basically determine this k right isn't it 
how we will do that? For that, we will have to invoke the collision theory. Okay. And also, right, we will have to learn that about in the next lecture, that is uh, the and uh, before doing getting into the collision theory, we will have to discuss about also the um, kinetic theory of gases. And before that, I will like to look at how to write these reactions compactly, right. And with this, we will stop over. Thank you very much.